Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Namaste to all. So, I am Dr. Gopal from Department of HSS IIT Dharwar, Karnataka in India. So, welcome back in this series, lecture series on evolutionary game theory. So far, we have covered a few essential concepts in game theory so that we can uh, start our journey of uh, evolutionary game theory. So, now uh, having done that, we will start our uh, this new topic, evolutionary game theory. So, so far what we did we studied game theory and saw how we model uh, strategic situations through game theory and then we characterize human behavior in su such a strategic setting uh, with the help of different equilibrium concepts. So, we went through the equilibrium concepts like Nash equilibrium, then we saw do dominant strategy equilibrium and we saw what uh, dominated st strategies and what dominant strategies are. And the essential quality or, or the property of the equilibrium concepts was that each player has no way to deviate unilaterally given uh, if we keep what other players do, player is doing fixed. So, he could not, the player cannot improve his well being or his cannot increase his payoff given the behavior of other players. And for this, what players were doing, they were simultaneously reason, reasoning about what other players are doing. So, that was a very process that we saw in all the strategic situations that we analyzed in game theory and this process requires mainly two things. So, if we can see this, so the individual or the player, he should be rational, he should be able to reason about what his options are there, what he can choose from and what others are doing and for that this player or all the players for that matter, they require lot of information. So, as we saw in the previous lectures that they should know what are their actions, available actions to them, who are the players and they should also know that what are their preferences over all these you know actions and outcomes coming from these actions. So, this is how this is how we saw that this process in game theory that we adopt to get the equilibrium involves these kind of things like information, rationality assumption of the players, but we can guess that such kind of you know requirements of rationality and information, they are not very you know easy requirements. What happens many a time that the players involved in many strategic situations, we cannot assume that all of them are rational one thing and the level of information as we saw this there should be some common knowledge among all these things uh, about all these aspects of the game that is also not an easy task. So, what we will do now we will see to analyze how to analyze different situations where we have these kind of you know strategic things, strategic environments. when we relax this you know assumptions. Also through this uh, the approach we adopted till now in game theory what happens we analyze human behavior, but how about you know certain situations where we can study where we would like to study the strategic behavior shown by different organisms other than human beings. For example, you can think of uh, ants, you have followed that ants always follow a uh, uh, same path that the previous ant is following. So, what do you think whether these ants have uh, this rationality as a common knowledge among them? I, I, I do not think so it is the case. So, what we will do under this evolutionary game theory, we will explore behavior of not only human beings as we did in the previous part of the game theory but also other life forms with levels of intellect far below 
what is required for the kind of reasoning assumed in the the game theory we dealt with till now i will call that rational game theory okay so we will go to evolutionary game theory now and till now we did rational game theory okay so so as it is clear now that this evolutionary game theory that applies to not only human beings only but also to all species throughout the animal kingdom so we'll try to get the idea of how all these uh, different species in the animal kingdom behave and we will analyze through game theory so we will try to analyze different phenomena in animal kingdom like some mating rituals some uh, species have then there is always a competition or in fact contest for resources then events of cooperation and also things like offspring sex ratio etc okay so these kind of you know phenomena i i should call them statistic again statistic interaction as we have been discussing statistic interactions only in game theory so now we will try to study these kind of inter statistic interactions as a few examples are these like mating rituals competition for resources cooperation and contest or how the different sex ratios in different species uh, they turn out so all these things we will try to analyze through this evolutionary game theory okay so now as 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 we started this evolutionary game theory by assuming that all the other living organisms other life forms they do not have that much of level of intellect that is with the uh, in humans and they can perform this kind of reasoning so what we are doing we are this in evolutionary game theory the mechanism for selection of the strategies that cannot be cognitive or there should not be need of that much of cognitive ability to select these kind of you know strategies in this system of evol evolutionary game theory so what happens in evolutionary game theory you must have read in your uh, biology class in some uh, uh, some uh, at some level in your school so something called natural selection natural selection i hope you have done this in in terms of darwinism so what is this natural selection this is an automatic unrelenting and unintentional process so this happens automatically and nobody does it so what happens to this in a population more fit traits or genes we can call them okay these thrive in a population automatically and whatever traits or genes or qualities of some organism the less fit of them that keep on perishing so what happens the population the proportion of say one type of organism one trait the fraction of population with one trait that is more fit in this population that fraction keeps on increasing and the other trait the fraction with other trait that keeps on perishing so this is how this process of natural selection goes on okay so same natural selection process works in evolutionary game theory that we will see how it works and through this uh, natural selection process what happens we get or the population reaches to a condition where this is a there is a stable collection of strategies okay and clearly we can say as in the normal game theory what we were doing a person was uh, deciding through his cognitive abilities like which strategies or what actions to choose from the available options now what is happening that intelligence of human brain that was working in case of normal game theory or the rational game theory is being being replaced with intelligence of natural selection so this is important and what is natural selection this is an automatic process by which what happens more fit traits or more fit genes they thrive in a population and lesser fit traits they keeps on diminishing in that population so this is how it happens so in rational game theory we saw that there is a set of players they are endowed with some preferences over various outcomes of the game for example we saw in prisoner's dilemma 
we see, saw in matching pennies, we saw in battle of sexes, we had many examples in the previous lectures. So, all of them, uh, in all of those examples, what was happening? They were a set of players, okay, and they were endowed with some preferences over various outcomes in the game, okay. And what was happening? A player was choosing a set of strategies, a strat strategy from a set of strategies, okay. And with that, with the strategy set that was being chosen by all the players, the outcome was being determined, okay. And all these players were able to, you know, rank these outcomes according to their, you know, preferences. So, that is how we were getting the equilibrium. And what was happening in selecting a strategy, what the player was doing, he was having some belief about what other player is doing, okay. So, the player was trying to develop a belief about what strategies the other player is choosing, okay. So, given that belief, this rational player as we were considering that the players are rational in the realm of uh, rational game theory. So, this rational player was choosing the strategy that was maximizing his payoff given the payoff of given the belief what other players are doing, belief about the choices, choice of strategies or actions, action of other players. So, this was a mechanism by which it was being happened, it was happening. So, what was happening? There were a set of players, they were endowed with some, you know, preference order regarding the various outcome of the game. And then each player had a set of strategies, okay. And then every player was choosing uh, their own strategy. But while selecting their own strategy, what they were doing, they were having some belief about other person's, uh, you know, choice of strategies. So, given that belief, they were choosing a strategy that were that was maximizing their payoff. That is how it was happening. And through this process, what we used to get was Nash equilibrium. Okay. So, in Nash equilibrium what was happening? Each player was doing the best he could given what others are doing. Okay. So, basically in this process, the total process if we see, there is an importance of this belief system. So, this process assumes that a person has accurate belief about the strategy selected by the other player. So, this belief about other players actions plays an important role and conditioned on this only, we get this Nash equilibrium, okay. But what happens in EZT, this uh, evolutionary game theory, we know that uh, all the normal uh, organisms other than human being, they are not that much rational and they do not have that much a cognitive ability that they will have some belief about other players. And also uh, among the human beings also, it is not possible to have at all the time to have all the information about the game they are playing or the strategic situation they are having. And then doing that much of calculation or that much of process, uh, this reasoning process to get to the Nash equilibrium. So, in this evolutionary game theory, we have this, we have this belief free world. So, here what is happening? you need not to have any belief about your opponent, what other person is doing, okay. Here also, we will start with this strategic form game that we did in the rational game theory in previous lectures, okay. But now what will be happening, earlier we had just say two players, we started with prisoner's dilemma, for example, like this, if you remember, okay, and there were player one there was player 2 and they were having some, you know, uh, say actions, pair of actions, for example, uh, cooperate or defect, cooperate and defect, things like that. Then we wrote the payoffs like this, okay. So, this was the situation previously in rational game theory, but what happening now is in evolutionary game theory, instead of just set of players, we have some larger setting that is called a population that we start with a population 
then what we do we select our two players from this population okay so now we are starting at a bigger canvas that we have some population okay then from this population a set of player is chosen okay for simplicity what we can do we can start this uh, analysis of evolutionary game theory considering a strategic interaction between two players what does that essentially means it means that in this population maybe any any size of population what we are doing we are having two players okay and these two players are involved in a pair wise interaction pair wise interaction okay so we can have uh, any such kind of you know uh, situations where this kind of uh, strategic inter interaction will happen so for example we may consider that in some uh, you know animal population there are two males they are battling for their reproductive rights over a female uh, animal okay so this kind of uh, interaction we can uh, have at that point of time okay other important thing is that while we are choosing this uh, two players for this situation the two male members suppose in this example they are randomly matched so this is important so what is happening so this is a population of these animals then out of this population we are selecting two players so what we are doing we are randomly selecting two players or what we are doing we are we say this this is how we say it that's that these two players are randomly matched to interact with each other so this is called randomly random matching so they are randomly matched to play this two player game okay now as i already told you that players do not have that much of cognitive ability okay and we have also relaxed the uh, requirement of rationality and such kind of information okay so what is happening these players do not select a strategy or action as it was happening in uh, previous case of prisoner's dilemma and other games we had studied in previous lectures now what is happening they are not at all selecting any strategy or action what is happening they are just pre programmed or hard wired pre programmed or hard wired to play a particular strategy okay so what is happening there are members in a population they are involved in some interaction but they are not selecting any action or strategy on their own they are all already pre programmed to play certain strategy for example example you can consider in the case of prisoner's dilemma suppose you are observing uh, this prisoner's dilemma game in a population then what is happening uh, few few members of that population are pre planned to choose the action c or few pro, few uh, members are pre programmed to choose action d what does it mean whatever happens they will always choose c or d whatever they are pre programmed with so this is the case in evolutionary game theory they are not consciously choosing any strategy or action they are just pre programmed to play something some particular strategy okay i hope it is clear so important thing is that in evolutionary game theory the selection process the strategy they select that happens at the level of population not at the individual level okay so individual is not selecting consciously it is being done at the level of the population so this is what happens in evolutionary game theory okay so what happens then when they select uh, they uh, choose some strategy as per their hard wired you know uh, setting then this in population strategies that perform better okay in terms of fitness that we already used that strategies that are more fit or the organisms with particular strategies that are more fit and we call this as in terms of fitness so in in place of pay off what we are doing we are replacing pay off with fitness so in normal game theory that we did uh, in previous lectures we used to have this pay off so uh, players were choosing the action or options with 
higher payoffs or that were maximizing their own payoff. But now what is happening in evolutionary game theory, instead of as, as we know that in evolutionary game theory, players do not choose themselves. What is happening automatically through the natural selection as we already saw that have that provide more fitness. So, this payoff, so the strategies that provide more fitness, the strategies that are not so well performing in that population, okay, through the mechanism of natural selection. So, now you can think of this. So, there is one population, okay, members of this population are pre programmed. to play certain action or strategy ok. So, there may be some fraction of the population that is playing one action or strategy, other fraction that is playing another you know action or strategy. Then what happens? The process of natural selection will begin. Natural selection will begin, and through this natural selection, what will happen? The strategies which give more fitness, or the organisms that are with the strategies that perform better in terms of fitness, they will thrive in this population. Okay, and the other uh, you know member of this population which have strategies that are not so well performing they will diminish in this population. So, this is how this natural selection works. Okay. Clearly, the individual player in evolutionary game theory setting cannot modify his behavior, okay. but what happens? The proportion of members who use particular strategy that changes and evolves in a population through this process of natural selection as I discussed. So, here what is happening? You can pay attention here that this at the population level the individual player is not doing anything, he is not changing, he cannot change his behavior. Let us suppose he is pre programmed, pre programmed to choose one action, say action A, he cannot change that, he cannot go ahead and say that I will not choose A and I will, I will go for B. It cannot happen because the organism is pre planned. Okay? But what happens? This natural selection occurs and automatically this, the, uh, the organisms or the members of the population that have that those strategies who are better in terms of fitness or they are more fitness provider or they the member of the population that have those strategies which make them more fit will thrive automatically through the natural selection can others diminish. Okay. So, this is how it works. Okay. So, now what is our job? This is uh, what we explained till now is how this natural selection works. Okay. So, we are looking for an equilibrium, our job is to look for an equilibrium as we did till now in the case of previous uh, in previous lectures in the case of uh, normal game theory also. Okay. So, we have been looking for equilibrium, Nash equilibrium. Okay. In evolutionary game theory also, we will do the same thing. Okay. We will look for an equilibrium and what do we mean by this equilibrium? So, what happens in equilibri equilibrium? a population of strategies such that this population persists over time. Okay. So, this population becomes stable, population becomes stable. This is what we mean by equilibrium in evolutionary setting. So, I will call right now there is a separate name special for this, we will uh, do that. So, we call it, I am calling right now evolutionary equilibrium. Okay. And when we are talking the sense of evolution, okay, then what is, meant, what is meant by population is stable? It meant that it is resistant to a mutation. So, when a population is resistant to any mutation, then we call that the population is stable. So, what happens? Some population is there, then due to certain processes, 
uh, you know biological processes what happens uh, members with some other trait okay for example if you just can think of say is there is a, some population of some animal and everybody is of red color what happens somehow a different colored species comes and that color is affecting their fitness in population so this kind of thing we call mutation you must be knowing through your biology knowledge in your school level what mutation is so whenever what happens in a population there is a mutation then what can happen that either mutation can overpower the original population or original population can overpower the mutation so if the original population is resistant to this mutation then we call that population is stable so we will find out such kind of evolutionary equilibrium okay this is our job in uh, through evolutionary game theory to analyze for this evolutionary equilibrium to get the condition when this population is stable over time okay fine so again we can see that in rational game theory the basic unit of analysis was player so player was doing everything player was endowed with some strategy or actions then <coughs> given his uh, preferences over different outcomes the player was choosing uh, strategy or action given the strategy action chosen by the opponent okay so this was player centric in the case of rational game theory so this was the basic uh, thing in the uh, rational game theory but in evolutionary game theory what is happening the basic unit of uh, analysis is strategy or some trait or gene so here player is not doing anything okay we define the population in terms of strategy or the mix of strategy or mix of traits uh, in that population and this is the basic unit of analysis okay in evolutionary game theory this individual unit in individual animal is just a vehicle of strategy okay they will keep on changing few few uh, member or the few animals if we are talking about the population of some animals or any organisms some will die out new one will come but it doesn't matter only the population mix matters so what is the fraction of fraction of different traits in population matters okay so individuals don't matter whether they are uh, dying new new individuals are coming it does not matter only the mix of strategies or the fraction of different traits in a population that is important in the evolutionary game theory i hope it is clear so again we can summarize what we did so far so we just try to find out uh, we try to find out the difference between rational and uh, evolutionary game theory so we saw that in rational game theory that we did earlier there is there is a set of players okay but here in evolutionary game theory there is a population from which a set of players is drawn okay so this is one difference then in rational game theory we had payoff and this payoff was the measure of well being and different players were choosing their actions or strategies keeping their payoff in mind so they were choosing their uh, choice of strategy or action which were maximizing their payoff given the other players strategy or action okay but in evolutionary setting what is happening the fitness is uh, there in place of payoff and this is a major of reproductive success in sense of uh, you know biology okay so we measure fitness and uh, this all strategy or traits that are chosen by uh, natural selection keeping the fitness in mind so this is another difference then in rational game theory the strategy is chosen by a player okay but in evolutionary game theory strategy is inherited by a player or as i told earlier also it is the player is pre programmed pre programmed or this strategy is hard wired a player cannot change it he is bound to play the same strategy or the same action it cannot change as we saw in the uh, rational game theory that 
player had his own wish that if he wanted to play one option, uh, one action, he could choose that action. At some other time, he could choose another action. But in evolutionary game theory, it is not so. He has to just keep on playing or in fact, he cannot change it. He just plays whatever action or strategy that is that uh, member of the population is hard by it will. Okay? And that is chosen by natural selection. So, there is no free will as the players enjoyed in rational game theory. Okay? The equilibrium concept different, we saw different equilibrium concept in uh, rational game theory. The simple idea of any equilibrium concept was that no player can do better. But in evolutionary game theory, the idea of equilibrium is no small mutation in the population can survive. So, the original population survives any small mutation in the population. So, this is how we can summarize uh, this rational versus evolutionary game theory. Okay? So, this was introduction of this evolutionary uh, game theory, how we depart from uh, rational game theory to you know evolutionary game theory. Having done this, we will try to see the equilibrium concept in evolutionary game theory in more detail. Okay? So, the, the equilibrium concept in evolutionary game theory is called evolutionary stable strategy. In short, we call it ESS. Okay? So, this is evolutionary stable strategy. Okay? This is the name of equilibrium concept that we use in uh, evolutionary game theory. Okay? So, in simpler world, uh, that is what we can say a stable strategy for a population that is called ESS. Okay? If we define it, then a strategy that makes a population resistant to the arrival of a small mutation with some other strategy. Okay? So, ESS is a strategy if that is being adopted by a population, say some population is there with some original strategy or trait simply. Okay? Now, a mutation comes this is small mutation with some different trait or strategy. Okay. So, if this original strategy or trait in the population, it is able to overcome this small mutation with some other you know trait or strategy, then we call this original strategy as ESS. Okay. So, this original strategy is able to outperform this small mutation with different strategy or trait in sense of or in terms of fitness, in, in terms of fitness, then we call this original strategy as ESS. So, simply a strategy uh, that makes a population resistant to the arrival of a small mutation with different strategy is called ESS, that's, that's, that is what I told you. Okay? So, natural selection, in terms of natural selection, what is happening? This ESS is more fit than mutation, that is what I told you that this population with original strategy is able to outperform this mutant population, the small population of the mutant with some other strategy, okay? then we call it ESS. Now, our job is like how to find what is the ESS in particular situation. Okay? And then we will see also see that how ESS is related to Nash equilibrium that we already did in previous lectures. Okay? Let us see. So, to study uh, how we can find out ESS, what we will do, we will take this example of hawk dove conflict. Okay? This is a very uh, general situation. In fact, we model this, we already done this hawk and dove game, hawk dove game, when we did this, you know, game theory in previous lectures. Okay? As I have already told you that we model many situations through this game. So, we will again go through the same kind of uh, situation that we had that time to analyze 
this situation in terms of evolutionary game theory and find out what ESS is there. Okay. So, in their uh, reproductive season what happens this uh, uh, the story goes like this. So, in their reproductive seasons these red deer stacks they often find them themselves in a conflict. Okay. So, suppose they meet some uh, they are on the hunting spree and they get some resource such as their food in terms of uh, some rabbit or some animal okay and or they are fi they are uh, you know fighting for some territory okay then what happens they go through a ritual suppose they are competing for their food or some territory okay then they go through a ritual to determine who acquires the resource okay and what happens that ritual is typically starts with some you know roaring they roar at each other okay and this roaring and their fighting capacity that depends on their fitness or health okay the condition of their health so what happens they can they can settle at this point also okay so basically the whole exercise this roaring okay so they start with roaring and the roaring also involves you know some capacities uh, some health situation so here also they can settle this okay if they cannot settle at this level at the level of roaring only then they get into physical you know fight okay and they lock their horns okay and they try to outperform each other by fighting okay in this battle what can happen they can have some injury but ultimately they decide through this fight that who is the winner winner takes the resource whatever uh, resource was there for which they were fighting and that is how they decide who is owning that resource okay fine so this is the story so game theorists model this story with the help of this hawk and dove game okay so we can consider that the two players as we started I, I told you in the starting that we are considering the two player interaction okay if we define in terms of uh, evolutionary game theory then there is a population of these uh, stacked years then from these stacked years we have uh, these randomly matched two deers red deer stack 1 red deer stack 2 okay both of them have got uh, this two strategies hawk and dove for deer 2 also this hawk and dove okay so what happens so when both of them interact with each other so one option is uh, is that they will roar to each other then what will happen if one of uh, both of them are not you know uh, that fit physically or they are not in good health what they will do they will roar for some time okay until one person uh, they will not actually fight okay and when one deer escapes then the other person will have it so that is that we call dove so the idea is so we, here we have two you know uh, players one is red deer stack 1 other is red deer stack 2 so both of them got two you know options one is hawk other one is dove okay hawk is this is ready to fight this is riskier you know option because in fight uh, they may get injured badly okay and other option is dove this is milder approach dovish approach we call it okay so they are not ready for actual fight okay so what is happening suppose two deers with trait of hawk they meet each other then both of them are ready to fight okay 
So, the value of the uh, territory or the food that they are fighting for is V. So, whoever is winner, he will get this value of B, the fitness level. The fitness they achieve from the resource that is V. But what happens when both of them are hawkish type? That means they are ready to fight, they are ready to go for actual fight to get this resource. Okay. Then what happens in the case of fight? The defeat, the defeated deer that gets some injury, injury that the defeated deer gets is C. Okay. And we are conceding that the cost that deers are getting injured or deers are getting in, in case of fight that has more uh, you know compared to the value of fitness that they are getting from this resource the loss of fitness due to this fight in terms of this cost c is more compared to v okay so this is the assumption we are having so the meaning of this assumption is that the fight uh, for the resource is very deadly and this is the injuries are life threatening. So, to model the situation, situation what we are doing we are considering that C is more than B. That means, the fitness loss of fitness due to injury is more than gain of fitness due to the resource they get after they win. Okay. So, because both are hawkish type and they are equally likely to win the fight. So, what will happen with equally likely probability they will win the fight to get V and also equally likely they will get injured in the fight. So, they will have this injury or loss of, of uh, this payoff C. Okay. So, we can calculate the expected payoff. So, in case of when a hawk type deer is fighting another hawk type deer then the expected payoff for them is b minus c by 2 and b minus c by 2. How? As I told you they are equally likely to win and they are equally likely, likely to lose. So, when they win then the winner gets v and the loser get minus c. So, the losing deer gets minus c the winner gets V. Okay. But as I told you they are kind of equally likely chances that both of them can win or both of them can lose. So, this will happen with probability half. So, with probability half a deer wins. So, he gets V. With probability half it loses. So, with probability half he gets minus C. So, it becomes b minus c by 2. Okay. So, this is true for both of these hawkish deers. So, both of them, them get this uh, expected payoff of b minus c by 2, b minus c by 2. I hope it is clear. So, this is coming from here. Again, I will repeat. So, with probability half and half, this person will, this person will win the prize. So, we will get this B okay. and with probability half this person will lose the fight. So, we will get minus C with probability half. Okay. So, overall expected fitness is B minus C by 2. Okay. I hope it is clear. Now, what happens suppose one hawkish deer interacts with another dovish deer. So, they will start by roaring, but soon this Dove will realize that I cannot fight and he will retreat, retreat back. So, then what will happen? This hawkish deer will get the entire resource that is V and the dove, the dovish uh, deer he will get 0 because he has already retreated. Okay? And since there was no fight, so there is no C here, there is no cost of fight, no injury because fight is not happening here. So, clearly the winner that is the hawkish de uh, deer he will get B and the dovish who retreated will get 0. Similar is the case with this thing. 
here what is happening when a dovish deer interacts with hawkish so now here we are writing the uh, payoff the expected fitness of this dovish deer so he will get zero and the hawkish will get v okay now let's come to this case now both dovish deers are interacting okay they will start with you know roaring at each other they will take posture and start roaring but nobody will fight so both of them are waiting that somebody should retreat okay until one of them uh, you know goes back okay both uh, keep on roaring okay when one retreats obviously there is no fight because both of them are dovish type so that person who is standing for more time he will get the resource okay and who retreats or backs down he will get zero but since both of them are dovish so they are equally likely to you know stand there or just you know retreat from there so with probability half this person will take get the v similarly with probability half this person will get zero okay why because both are dovish type they are roaring but one will go away once he thinks okay i don't need it okay so in this case the expected fitness is b by 2 so both of them get b by 2 b by 2 again i am explaining why because both are dovish type they both take posture start roaring and keep on rolling, uh, roaring until one of them backs off. Okay, but both of both of these deers of same kind, same trait, and same strength. So what will happen? There is an equally likely chance that anybody can back off, anybody can stand there. Okay, so with probability half because it is equally likely, one will get v, and similarly he will get zero with probability half because they are equally likely for both things. So, the overall expected payoff is b by 2. So, that is how they are getting b by 2 and b by 2 here. Okay. So, this is how we get this I explained to you this game matrix. Now, we will see how to calculate ESS in this scenario. Okay. Fine. So, we started with this we are studying this game called Hawk and Dove game. Okay, so there is a stat one here, stat two here. Options are hawk and dove, hawk and dove here. Okay, and what we have here, we analyzed just now that here the expected payoff is b minus c by two comma b minus c by two. Here it is. There is a, when there is an interaction between hawk and dove, the hawk will get v and dove will get 0. When there is an interaction between dove and this hawk, the dove will get 0 and hawk will get v. And this square, when both doves are interacting, both of them will get v by 2 comma v by 2 as their expected fitness, fitness level. Okay. I hope the game matrix I already explained to you is clear to you. Okay. So, now to get the ESS in this population, so let us start with suppose we begin with a population with all hawks. Okay. So, we are starting that in our in this population of deers, all deers are hawk type. The hardwired trait or strategy with them is hawk. Okay. Now, how the game, game progresses in evolutionary setting? So, two deers. randomly matched to play this hog dub game ok 
okay fine so now what we will do we will assume that there is a mutation this population okay and what is the mutation that a fraction a small fraction epsilon of dove type enters this population okay so let me tell you again so we are starting with the population of all hawks okay now we are assuming that there is one mutation in this population and a small fraction epsilon okay with dub type in a population with all hawks epsilon fraction of dub type enters this population okay so what is the composition now now 1 minus epsilon fraction belongs to hawk types hawk type and the fraction epsilon belongs to dub type okay so again i'm telling we started with a population of all hawks then epsilon fraction of dove comes through some mutation okay so final uh, initial composition composition after mutation what is that 1 minus epsilon uh, fraction is hawk and epsilon fraction is dub type okay so now from this population two deers are randomly matched to play this hawk dub game so we will see what is the expected fitness of a hawk in this scenario okay so let's see this so i'm writing expected fitness of a hawk okay so this is so see now epsilon fraction is of doves 1 minus epsilon fraction of hawk okay so what will happen a hawk deer it can fight a hawk can fight a hawk or a dove why because I, as i already told you now there is a composition there are two types of deer 1 minus epsilon fraction of hawk types type and epsilon fraction of dove type and what we are doing we are randomly matching two deers in this population to play this game so each hawk can either play with another hawk can either randomly match with another hawk or can randomly match with an another dove okay so a hawk can be matched randomly with another hawk with probability 1 minus epsilon as the fraction of hawk is 1 minus epsilon similarly the probability with which a hawk meets dove is epsilon with the help of this probability i will write the expected fitness of hawk it is let me write 1 minus epsilon multiplied by b minus c divided by 2 okay plus epsilon v okay so this is the expected fitness of hawk in this scenario how so the, this is the probability 1 minus epsilon pay attention please 1 minus epsilon is the probability with which a hawk meets another hawk and we can see from here when one hawk interacts with another hawk 
what is the expected fitness? It is this b minus c by 2. So, this probability multiplied by this fitness. Okay. Similarly, this epsilon, this is the probability with which a hawk meets a dove. Okay. Because I explained it to you here that these are the fractions, so these are the probabilities. Okay. So, this probability of a hawk meeting a dove multiplied by, so here you can see hawk is meeting with a dove here. So, this cell, so how much it gets? It gets B, hawk gets B in this interaction. So, probability of hawk meeting dove epsilon multiplied by this pair of this fitness V. So, this is how we can calculate, we calculated expected fitness, fitness of a hawk. Okay. Similarly, we can write expected fit, fitness of dove. Okay. So, in the same manner, I can write it, you can just pay attention, I am writing 1 minus epsilon multiplied by 0 plus epsilon multiplied by v y 2. So, this is the probability with which a dove meets hawk and this is the probability with which a dove meets dove. And you can see from here in this matrix, when a dove interacts with hawk, it gets 0. So, multiplied by 0 here and when a dove interacts with dove, they get b y 2. So, it is b y 2 here, probability multi multiplied by payoff, probability multiplied by payoff. So, that is how we get expected fitness of d type or the dove type. So, this is how we can write expected fitness of both of these kind of uh, hawk uh, deer population in this uh, mix of population. Okay. So, we will uh, close this lecture here. So, uh, we will further uh, carry this forward in the next class. Thank you very much.